I want to welcome you to uh, Lecture 6, Unit 1. My name is Jorge Gabriel, and this is for Statistics 2023. So in this lecture, um, I'm actually going to show you some examples on how to construct a histogram of frequency polygon and ogive using Excel. So the, the particular objectives for this particular um, uh, lecture is that we're just going to learn how to represent data in frequency distributions graphically using histograms, fre frequency polygon, and ogive. So some of the most commonly used graph, uh, is, of course, is the histogram, the frequency polygon, and then the cumulative frequency. So the first one that we're going to talk about is the histogram. So a histogram is simply a graph that just displays the data uh, by using contiguous vertical bars. Now, uh, what this means is if we construct a bar graph, there's, there's going to be some space in between the bars. But in a histogram, there is no space, so the data is continuous uh, within the histogram that we that we built. So the first thing is, here we have uh, some record high temperatures. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and construct a, a histogram using this raw data. And this, this is a record high temperatures for each of the 50 states. So um, what I'm going to do, and if you notice here, I have my midpoints, I have my class boundaries, and I have the frequency. So I, I've already put this in the frequency distribution table. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to use this information here uh, to build my, my histogram. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and go to Excel. So here's Excel. And here you can see uh, my 50 uh, data points. So here are the temperatures for the 50 states. And then what I did was um, I used my upper boundary, my upper class boundaries as what they call the bin. So what you're going to have to do uh, is you're going to have to create these bins in order to use the capabilities within Excel to build the histogram. Now, uh, if you're using Excel on campus or you have Excel at home, the first thing that you want to do is you want to install the data analysis pack. And the way that you do that is you go to File, click on Options, and depending on which one you have, uh, it's a different way of getting it. But once you get to this point, it's, it's the same thing. Then you click on uh, Add-ins. And then here you can see that it says analysis tool pack. Now, if it's already installed, it'll be up here. If it's not, it would be here under inactive. So what you do is you just click on it and then you click on uh, go here at the bottom. And then you got to make sure that the, the radio uh, button is marked and then you just click on OK. And what, it, what it's going to do is going to go ahead and install it. Now, once you do that, you go you click on the data tab and then it's going to be on the right hand side so data analysis so we're going to go ahead and construct the histogram using uh, the data analysis pack in Excel so here uh, normally it's highlighted down here so just make sure that you highlight histogram you click on OK let me um, clear, out, clear all this out real quick so the input range is going to be your raw data your bin range <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to be your uh, upper class boundaries. And the reason that you want to use the upper class boundaries is because if you don't, then your frequency distribution is going to be off a little bit. If you use the midpoints, it's going to be off uh, because the midpoint doesn't include the highest data value. So what Excel does is it looks at the value that you put in the bin and it counts any data value between that one and the previous one. So obviously if something is above uh, 132, which is the midpoint, it's going to be missed. So what you do is you click on input range and I'm going to highlight all of the data, my 50 data values. Click on the button again. And then the next thing is that my bin range is going to be my uh, upper class boundaries that I uh, had typed in previously. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and, and have it uh, const constructed right here in this page and I'll show you the tab that's it's already been done. So what you do is you got to make sure that you click chart output um, you can click uh, new worksheet and that's going to put in a new worksheet or in this case I'm just going to go ahead and click on output range and that's going to put it right here in the same sheet that I have so I'm just going to highlight anything here because it really doesn't matter then at that point in time I just click OK and now I have my histogram now if you if you notice it actually looks like a bar chart so I have to tweak it a little bit so the first thing that I do is I get rid of that legend then I just delete that there and if you notice it took it off so, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is um, I, I like to change my, um, the label. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and type in class boundaries. And then for my title, I'm just going to put uh, 
record high temperatures. And I'm just going to put, um, so people know that it's in Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit. And so now I have to tweak it just a little bit more in order for it to look like uh, a histogram. But if you notice, you can compare this frequency distribution with what we had in, um, in the table in the PowerPoint presentation. Let me just show you that real quick. And if you notice, these distributions are exactly the same. So, so that's the nice thing about it is that Excel will actually count it for you. So now, if I, if I click on it, and then I right click, I can go ahead and uh, format the data series. And what I want to do is the gap width here, I actually want it to be uh, zero. I don't want any spacing in between those. You can just click that or just move it all the way over um, <clears throat> to the left. So now, the next thing that I'm going to do uh, is change some colors. So if you notice, if I click on it, every single bar is highlighted, but I just want one of them. So I click on it and I right click and then I can go ahead and just change the fill and it doesn't really matter the colors so you just want to change it so you're able to um, tell the difference between uh, one um, class and the other class oops sorry so <clears throat> let's just pick some different points here I mean different colors and oop, once you do this a couple of times it, it becomes a little easier to to get them all done. So it's not that difficult to do. Uh, you just have to be careful with um, your colors. You don't you don't want a histogram with all the same colors because then no one will be able to tell the difference. So that's the histogram uh, using Excel, and this is the one that I had done previously. So you can see it's, it's cleaned up a little bit. Um, so that's how you do a uh, histogram using Excel. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the frequency polygon. So we're going to use the same data to construct the frequency polygon. And so a frequency polygon is just a graph that displays the data using lines uh, with connect points. So you have a marker for each data point and, uh, and then in this case, I'm going to use the midpoints of the classes. And then the frequencies are just represented by the height of the points. So let's go ahead and look at that to see what that looks like. So here's the, um, here's the data that we had done before. And I'm just going to show you how to do this. I'm going to move this one out the way. So here are my midpoints. And this is uh, in that um, chart that I had shown you before. So the, these are my midpoints, these are my frequencies, and that's okay. So the way that you want to do the frequency polygon is that you want to highlight um, your actual your, your frequency distribution. Then you click on uh, Insert, and you just want to insert uh, a line graph. And I just usually just pick the first one. And if you notice, now it starts looking like the one that I had previously constructed. So here's my... Um, my frequency polygon. Now I just have to uh, tweak it a little bit. So the first thing I want to do is I want to change um, my horizontal axis to my midpoint. So what I do is I click on it and if you notice it's highlighted and then what I want to do is I want to uh, make sure I click on design and then select data horizontal and then what I'm going to do is simply just highlight my midpoint and I click on OK a couple of times and now my midpoints are there. So now the next thing that I want to do is I want to inst uh, I want to go ahead and put those um, those markers. So you click depending on which one you have it will be slightly different but you want to uh, click on marker. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, marker options and I normally click on built in. I put the circle and in the fill I like to do a solid fill so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make it red so let's just make it red. And, and then of course the next thing I do is I change the um, the title. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this one here so we can see it. Oops, sorry. Let me get rid of this one. And of course the next thing is uh, put my um, my title. So what I do is I click on it. I, oh, I can um, go ahead and click on design add element uh, charts, axis title, horizontal, uh, my horizontal would be midpoints, and my vertical is just going to be frequency, and then of course here I can just put um,
brick at high temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit. And that's how you construct the uh, frequency polygon using Excel. So the next thing that we're going to talk about now is the the ogive. And the ogive, what it does is it, it's a it's a line graph, but it represents the cumulative frequencies of the classes that we just constructed. And so let's go ahead and do that. So here's my my um, my data, and I'm going to show you how we construct this. So let me just go back real quick to um, my record high temperature. So let me get rid of this here so I can show you how to do the um, the ogive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to data analysis. So I click on data, data analysis, histogram, click on OK. The nice thing is that the data is already there. The only thing that I have to do is I have to click on cumulative percentages. And that's going to construct the line graph. It's also going to construct the, the histogram, but we can get rid of that. So when I click on OK, uh, you notice that here I have quite a bit of information in this chart. So the first thing I do is I just get rid of that because I don't want that. The next thing is I click on one of the bars and you notice that they're all highlighted and I just I delete that also. And now what I'm left with is the uh, the ogive. Get rid of this more and that's just the default setting in Excel. It's kind of terrible but uh, we can just get rid of it. So uh, here's my, my uh, my what I want to do obviously this is not it's not frequency so I want to change that so that's my vertical title so what I want to do is I uh, actually want to type in relative uh, frequency and just make sure you spell it correctly oops hold on a second sorry about that Okay, and as you can see, and then this this will be uh, um, class boundaries, and then here it's not the histogram; it's actually an ogive, and uh, I do have that, so I'm going to show you what that looks like, all nice and cleaned up, and the markers you do it exactly the same way, and if you notice, my frequency is still the same. My cumulative percentages should add up to 100%, so that's good to go. So that's how you construct an ogive, or a frequency polygon, and a histogram using Excel. Um, so at this point in time, you actually have enough information to construct all of the the graphs that uh, is required for um, the first lab. So let me go ahead and finish the slides here so we can uh, continue to go through this. So again, the histogram, rec uh, frequency polygon, the ogive, we use the raw data in terms of frequency. So we use frequencies in terms of raw data. We convert the raw data to proportions. Uh, this And uh, relative frequency, of course, this is what's called a relative frequency graph. Um, and uh, so how, you know, a lot of times we try to figure out, okay, we have to do this by hand and how do we do this? And honestly, uh, the way that we do the relative frequency by hand is we just take the, the frequency of each class and divide it by the total of all uh, the data points that we have. And so that's fairly straightforward, but as you can see, uh, Excel will actually do that for you. Now I want to talk about distribution of shapes and I'm just going to go over this real quickly because when we graph um, a data set we want to uh, at least have an idea of, of the, the shape that it has. So the first one is a bell shape and this is just a bell curve and you can see it's just if I were to draw a line it just looks like uh, a bell. The next one is a uniform and the uniform distribution uh, provides very little information. A uniform distribution basically is just all the bars are essentially the same, uh, the same height. Right skewed, as you can see, uh, right skewed is actually higher on the left. Left skewed uh, is actually higher on the right. Um, and then this is what they call a J shape. J shape is different than a, than a right or left skewed uh, because they actually either increase to the left or increase to the right. So this is a J shape, a reverse J shape. We can also tell the the mode of a uh, of a data set by um, by graphing it. So this is what we call bimodal. It has two peaks of the same height. Or we have what is called a U shape. So 
couple of questions to ask yourself when you analyze histograms or any other um, graph is does it have one one or two peaks is it flat is it u-shaped are the data values spread out on the graph are they clustered around the center are they clustered on the left or on the right are there any extreme values what we call outliers so all of these things we're able to, to actually tell simply by graphing a data set and that's the end of lecture six unit one thank you